Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, in this conversation, uh, you may have heard reference to the safeties in some of the previous conversations that we've had, and uh, today I would like to talk with you about the safeties and maybe have a conversation about that with you. If there are those of you that have questions about your Kundalini Awakening experience, uh, please feel free to call in at uh, United States Area Code 347-934-0026. So that's 347-934-0026. I'd like to welcome everybody in the chat room from Fasti and Eileen and Amelia and all the guests and Brandon. Hello, everyone, and, and welcome to to this broadcast of, of your Kundalini Awakening experience, or at least a subject related to it. Uh, first, I would like to say thank you to Amelia Santara and her family in the... Uh, the uh, country of Ireland and the kingdom of Kerry within that country. Um, I, I'd like to thank you, Amelia, for supporting this show and uh, supporting the information being given uh, uh, into the population. So thank you very much to you, to your husband, and to your children, and everybody connected with uh, uh, Centara. So, thank you. I would like to thank Glenn Ola for the de- design of the website that uh, hopefully a, a, a few of you will be accessing during this conversation. Uh, the the website is Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and that's the number one. So it's not you know spelled out. It's Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and. Uh, and we'll be looking at the safeties chapter there and then going through the safeties one by one. Um, I would like to thank Eileen Laurel, who is with us today. Hello, Eileen. And hello, Tim Ashworth. I see you. Nice to see you here. Um, uh, Eileen, uh, you know, has has really given a lot to this program and continues to give to this program. So, so thank you, Eileen. Thank you for doing everything that you, you do and have done. Uh, let's see. I would like to thank um, uh, my family, who are going through a rough time right now with the with the the, the, the passing of a patriarch, and uh, you know it's a very difficult time uh, in a person's family. And so, my love and and my my grace reaches out to my own family members that they may be uh, given uh, sustenance during this difficult time. In their life experience, and hello back to you, Brandon Nine Thousand. Nice to see you here. Um, there are other places where you can access this information. One is YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you just go uh, Chrisum Kundalini, and then all the videos will come up on the on the right hand side, and uh, you can kind of pick and choose uh, what video you wish to to uh, to view. Another area would be uh, in the Yahoo groups. Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com and then on Facebook, Kundalini Awakening System 2 uh, on Facebook groups and then also Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point. Uh, that's another group. That's actually the largest group on the in the Facebook network. And then um, we have smaller, more more personal groups about specific subjects within the Kundalini and one of those is a Kundalini Ashram that is also on Facebook. Uh, and then we have Kundalini Healing on Facebook. And uh, when I'm giving Shakti Pot during the solstices, we also have a, a Christian Shakti Pot group there. And then, uh, you know, we, we do the Shakti Pot from, from that aspect. Uh, so there are a few other places there uh, where you can, can uh, reach this information. Uh, Kundalini Matters. Uh, uh, is another website, so you just go Kundalini Matters. You know, punch that into the into the Google search engine, and uh, that'll bring you up to uh, Amelia Satara's website, full of really uh, excellent information, as well as Eileen's website, which is called Kundalini Living, 
and if you uh, you know push that into your into your search engine, uh, Kundalini Living, and you might put uh, 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 eLaurel55 five five at yahoo.com just to 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 make sure that it's because Kundalini Living, you know, anybody that's alive and has Kundalini, well, they might write on that. So so go ahead and check out her website as well. It's it's excellent. Let us begin with our. Uh, study of the safeties. The safeties are a group of protocols that that uh, I asked my Kundalini to bring into existence simply because uh, I gave Shaktipat to a person that I didn't feel was was really able to handle it at the time, and I could see the effect that it had on him and on his family and on his livelihood and in his attitudes about life. And now this was a gentleman who was going to thirty. Uh, 30 uh, kundalini type seminars a year. This man was on fire. He was going to, he was going to light it up no matter what. But he wasn't going to do any of the uh, any of the inner work. He just wanted to awaken the kundalini, and I guess he figured that he would just it would that would solve all his problems. Well, it didn't. You know, it did. It basically amplified a lot of them because he wasn't willing. To uh, to uh, to actively approach the solution to his issues. However, you know that's that's basically on him. Those are those are things that he can deal with. My perspective of this was since I gave the Shakti Pod and I gave the Spark and all of this stuff, I wanted a greater level of of not so much control, but but I wanted to be able to take it back if it was harming the person or if, if it was going to push that person into such a huge traumatic uh, life event that maybe a little taste is, big, is better than a big taste all at the same time. If a person gets a little taste and they like that flavor, well, they can, they can pursue it themselves. They can do the practices. They can do the work. They can change the attitude. They can make the behavior modifications they can begin to really participate in their own transformation vis-a-vis the kundalini. And so, uh, you know, I went into a, a meditation and I really, I didn't want to give any more Shakti Pods. I was doing seminars at the time back in 2005 and six, And uh, I asked for a, a, a set of protocols that could be given that would allow people to explore the kundalini uh, within a, a better uh, environment than just throwing energy at them, okay? And this is where the safety protocols came up. Now, I didn't, you know, I didn't have the knowledge that, uh, that uh, certainly not the breadth of knowledge that the, that the actual kundalini consciousness itself has. I mean, it'll, it shares certain things with me because two-thirds of what I am is kundalini and one-third me, the person you're hearing right now, is the is the recipient of the Kundalini. And so there are a lot of things that are shared, but not all things are shared because not all things are able to be uh, digested in a five sense physical uh, world refinement uh, classroom. So there are just 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 as there are uh, gases and and light spectrums that we don't see and and in many ways we don't understand. The same thing with the Kundalini. As you go outside of the physical five sense human spectrum of analysis, of observation, of experience, you, you're going to have certain aspects of those qualities that are going to cause you to have expectation or judgment about whatever it is that you're observing. Okay. And with Kundalini, it's going to, you know, you're going to, you'll be kind of forced to step right outside of those expectations. What I noticed that the Kundalini did, because I researched it after after writing the safeties, is uh, it basically took... Uh, this this happened before I, w- I was inside of the information that all cultures in this world that have human beings in them have Kundalini involved in them. Okay, And so basically the Kundalini was telling me that uh, one, that all cultures have this, number one, and number two, that uh, 
that because all cultures have it, over the thousands and thousands and millions of years, all cultures have learned certain techniques that allow the kundalini to be raised and nurtured uh, within the individual rather than having it raised and then resisted. And these nurturing uh, protocols are what have been written down in the safeties. And it's taken it, the, the kundalini is taking the information from, from really pretty much around the world, Siberia, China, uh, Western Europe, Africa, India, uh, Australia, United States, Canada, South America. Uh, it's taken information from the shamanic and the religious devotional. It's taken information from uh, the ancient Sanskrit and the ancient Egyptian to the to to, to some of the protocols of of. Uh, of ancient France, ancient Britain, Ireland, Scotland. Uh, it's, it's taken uh, specific techniques from those areas that allow us to, to, uh, to flourish within the Kundalini instead of suffer so hard. Sometimes we must suffer. Absolutely. Sometimes we must suffer. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to take away all suffering. I'm going to say that it's going to make things a lot, uh, shall we say, more engaging, better, more interesting, less fearful. Uh, if I'm here to do anything, it's to take a lot of the fear out of the Kundalini. Uh, kundalini syndrome is basically uh, fear being allowed to con to control the psychology of a Kundalini awakening person. And this is not what I want. Uh, Eileen, I see that you are on the chat group there. Eileen, can you write something about the sound quality? Is everybody able to hear me well enough? Can I get some feedback on that? Or maybe somebody can call in at 347-934-0026. And I will put you on the air. And, you know, I've had so many interesting technical um, challenges with uh, Blog Talk Radio that I want to make sure at every show that things are coming through. And I want to apologize to you who are listening right now and to you who are listening in the archives for some of the other difficult areas of, uh, of the show. Brandon, thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Brandon9000 says, I can hear you perfectly clear. Wow, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. And Eileen, I see that you're typing, and let's see. Eileen, I can hear you, but it seems to go soft, then louder. Maybe stay close to the mic, not too close. Ah, yeah, well, I'm not going to eat this cell phone mic. All right. If you go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, you're going to have to go there. That's K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I-A-W-A-K-E-N-I-N-G-S-Y-S-T-E-M-S, -E -E the number one, and then dot .com. And so go there. And then the fifth option down on the left-hand side, uh, you'll see a little selector, selector button there called the safeties. And that will take you right to where I'm, I'm beginning to, uh, to, uh, to work right now. Okay? Safeties, safeties are, are really, in many ways, a godsend. I wish I'd have had them when I was starting out with this. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and begin with this. And if you are in process with Kundalini, and, or, or you intend to be in process with the Kundalini, which, which accounts for some of you. Some of you know that you, you want to have Kundalini, but, but you, you hear so much negativity about it. You hear so much fear about it that you're, you're quite sensibly going, well, what, uh, what's the best way to go about this? And so here you are. I will suggest that in, in my, my opinion and in my experience, the safeties are the best option for Kundalini awakening uh, that is being given anywhere. Uh, there's two things that's going on with them. It was written uh, by the Kundalini itself through the person that the Kundalini has selected to teach this information. Okay, uh, everything that I ask people to do within the safeties, I have done myself as a practice that has lasted for years. Okay, so this is something that I'm I am a fairly uh, uh, understanding of. Thank you, Pastor Jane. Thank you, and Brandon and and, uh, and Eileen. Uh, so. So if you're in the process with the Kundalini or you intend to be, look through the safeties and begin to practice these daily. Um, 
really uh, not, I, I don't want you to just read it. I want you to practice it. So, I, you know, I write in there, it says, please read them three times on three separate occasions so that you can begin to see and feel how they will help you find and understand uh, the very qualities within yourself that you seek and the qualities that you seek are the kundalini. And the reason I have you go three times on three separate occasions is I want you to be able to uh, take the information uh, three separate times. There's a certain sacred mathematics that goes with with uh, with three, three, six, or nine. So many times in the instructions I give to people, I will I will ask them to do things three times, nine times, uh, six times, things of that nature, or derivations of those numbers. So read them three times on three separate occasions and see how you feel. And uh, I'm going to suggest that you begin to practice them daily. But with the with the safeties, I want you to go slow. I don't want you to think that if you practice the safeties one time that you have reached the pinnacle of enlightenment because that is definitely not the case. You're beginning to walk uh, an enlightened mountain. There are many enlightened mountains but you're beginning to walk upon enlightened firmament. And so in that in that sense you can yes, you can be very comfortable and you can be very happy and you can you can re, you can see how the information that is given here resonates with you and, and with how you're feeling about all of this. Uh the first thing um I want you I want to suggest to you is to get very familiar with your tongue in the up position. Uh this completes a cranial circuit. There are many circuits and many many energetic pathways within the body and the, the tongue tip behind the upper front teeth on that soft, fleshy mound behind the upper front teeth. Put your tongue tip there. The tongue will actually, if you already have the Kundalini or it's coming up on you, it will naturally want to go there anyway. You you may be thinking, oh, wow, it's, already, it's always there anyway. And that's good. And that's good. And that should give you a bit of a communication about how your kundalini is already underway. Things are already moving in that direction. And what you can do is really step out of your own way, surrender yourself to the kundalini, practice these protocols twice a day, in the morning and in the evening, and really begin to observe the changes that begin to occur in your body and in your perceptual existence. Okay? So get that tongue tip up behind the upper front teeth on that soft, fleshy mound right there. Now, there are more than just one uh, uh, lingual placement. There, you know, I've charted five lingual placements, but the first one and the most important one at this point in most people's uh, awakening is going to be the tongue tip behind the upper front teeth. So, so close that mouth, and unless you're kissing, eating, talking, sneezing, barfing, laughing, crying, whatever, I want that tongue tip up behind that upper front teeth. It's going to help you quite a bit. And, you know, and I, I've experienced this. You can get a tongue burn. Uh, the energy wants to travel. It wants to, it wants to expand. It wants to spread out. And if you're refusing to put your tongue tip up behind that upper front, uh, those upper front teeth, uh, then you're in, in a way you're inhibiting the flow of the energy. And the energy will respond by burning the tip of your tongue and it is as if you have you have put your tongue tip on a frozen ice tray that's been electrocuted it's that kind of a sensation and you can get you you know you put your tongue tip back up and the energy flows and everything and wow you can sure feel the difference sure feel the difference so so in order to avoid the tongue tip burn i will suggest that you really you know focus on putting that tongue up uh, in the next uh, physical position, uh, these, this would be eyes up. Now, look, look, these, these positions, these are called locks in the Sanskrit terminology. Locks or bandhas, B-A-N-D-H-A-S. But I'm not going to go so far into the Sanskrit with this because, you know what? None of you are Sanskrit that are listening to this. The Sanskriti people died out, you know, eight, 9,000 years ago. They left this written information in things like the Rig Veda and some of the other books, and these are, these are you know, where we get a lot of our information about the Kundalini, plus people after the Rishis, with the, 
the Rig Veda was written by the, the Sanskriti people, of which the Rishis were a subset of the Sanskriti people. And these Rishis are the ones that wrote the books, and these Rishis are the ones that also uh, knew the most about, it seems, it would appear, knew the most of, uh, about the Kundalini in that civilization. And so, so uh, really... Uh, Understand that yes, yes, yes. I do have I, I do have uh, information with regards to the to the Sanskrit origins of many of the things that I'm going to describe to you. And this just should underscore the information that Kundalini pulled this from everywhere, from the Australian Aborigines to the to the shamans in the Amazon basin. Uh, it was not, uh, you know, and it didn't pull it didn't pull the information to go. Oh well, you know the the, the Aboriginal people they know everything about Kundalini. Oh well, you know, let's compete that, or, or you know, or the Sanskriti people. Oh well, you know, everybody's doing yoga now. Yoga's very popular. Okay, well, the Sanskrit people must know everything there is to know about Kundalini. Nobody else knows anything unless they're Sanskrit, and, and uh, you know, a relative of a Rishi that's been dead for eight thousand years. You know, it, Kundalini doesn't play these little ego competitive games that my way is the best way because it works for me. Uh, it, what it's doing by by giving all these different things is is showing people that there are many ways to do the same thing. You know, you can drink water out of a spoon. You can drink water out of a cup. You can drink water out of out of a river just by burying your head in the river, river and starting to drink. I know you city folks who have never done that kind of cringe at that thought, but, but I have done that, and it's quite nice, actually. But anyway, make sure it's clean water. Um, the second position or lock, or banda, will be called, is the eyes up position. And this is where, uh, if you look at any of the Hindu people that have the uh, the red dot on their forehead, okay, the, the bindu, uh, that is where it is assumed that the third eye is. Okay. What I want you to do with the eyes up position is I want you to look with both eyes straight up to your eyebrows, and then just with a, just a hint of just a very, very subtle hint of bringing both eyes towards the upper bridge of the nose. Okay, so you're slightly cross-eyed with it, but very, very slightly. The, the most important thing is to get those eyes up looking at your eyebrows. Okay, this, this has the ability to blend with the first and second chakra. A little trinity is created there, and that trinity uh, is stimulative to the magnetic pull that some of the upper chakras have on the lower chakras and it's specifically with regards to the kundalini it can begin to pull the kundalini up the spinal column the eyes up position and so you'll see you'll see a lot of different uh, religions where the eyes are up slightly closed maybe not all the way closed but certainly up and and uh you might look at that and go oh, okay maybe they're working with the kundalini in the uh in the area here on the website, I put uh, fingers in position for the next topic. And you'll, under, you'll, you'll notice that I'm putting everything in English. I want everything in English. I want people to understand this. You know, I'm not trying to go, oh, look at Chris. He can say things in Sanskrit. Yee, wow, he must be really smart. You know, I don't really care about, you know, making this sound PhD-like or medically terminated or terminology. You know, I want this to be plain and simple. And I would suggest that for any of you that are going to explain your uh, journey, your Kundalini journey, that you keep it plain and simple because it's already, it's already way too fantastic for most people to hear, okay? And so you don't put the fire out with gasoline, right? So in the next lock, uh, we go to fingers in position, and uh, you can a you know you can make it uh, FIP <laughs> if you want. Uh, this is the thumb tip and the fingertip of each hand pressed together with the tips, not the not the pad, but the tips, with the other fingers spread out wide. This is called the Gyan Mudra. For those of you that are following some of the more Sanskrit uh, yoga based, Hindu based. Terminologies. This is called Gyan Mudra, and uh, so those those positions are what I have written down here on the website. I'm going to add 
a couple of other uh, uh, mandas uh, for you and uh, that I don't have written down here, just so that you can see how special the Blog Talk Radio Show is. <laughs> we'll compete the website then. Uh, uh, the next one that I'm going to suggest for you is your chin to your chest. Now, I'm not talking about uh, the skin of your chin to the skin of your chest. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your if you're just looking straight ahead normally, you bring your head down about an inch and a half to two inches. And that means your chin goes towards your chest about two inches from your normal uh, uh, neck position or chin position. And what this does is this is giving a slight stretch to the spinal cord within the spinal column. And it's also augmenting all the muscle groups that support uh, kundalini activation within the body. It's putting them in that special uh, position of awaiting activation or, or awakening. And let, let's be clear about this a little bit so as we, as we rest with our tongue up, our eyes up, and our, our fingers in the Gaian Mudra or in position. And what I just said, there are groups of muscles that collaborate harmoniously, synchronistically with levels of kundalini energy that are released up the spine. And so these muscles will begin to do things automatically upon your body, and it'll, it'll feel fairly weird to you uh, because you won't recognize these muscle groups at all. And even if you knew of them, which most of you do not, even if you knew of them, uh, you wouldn't know all of these muscle collaborations that are being, de you know, developed by the Kundalini for your own specific awakening equation, okay? So the muscle groups, like different notes in a symphony, will come together in syncopated uh, excitation. And this syncopated excitation can form into kriyas, uh, can f kriyas being automatic, uh, spontaneous physical movements produced by kundalini energy in the body. Uh, it can, it can, you know, these, these muscle groups can go into kriyas. They can also go into locks like the, uh, the tongue up. That's a good example of the, of the body just taking over. If all of a sudden you find yourself with the tongue tip to the upper front teeth all the time, you know, behind the upper front teeth, well, you know that your, your body kundalini is taking over. And just say thank you to it. Give it, give it some positive uh, reinforcement there because it knows what it's doing more than your ego knows what it's doing. <laughs> anyway, so chin down about two inches towards your chest. And then at the same time, of course, you'll have your tongue up, you'll have your eyes up, you'll have your fingers in position. Okay? Uh, now, we're verging on what is called the Maha Banda in the, uh, in the Sanskrit. And in the English, that's the, the great lock or the, 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 the one lock that is comprised of many locks, right? And you can kind of see where I'm going. It's like you got the tongue lock, the eyes up, fingers in position. Um, and then you got the chin, and then there are a couple other locks that I'm going to tell you about. Actually, one other lock I'm going to tell you about. And they're going to, that's going to comprise uh, five Manda locks, okay? And these locks are going to contribute, once again, to the Kundalini uh, flowing into your spine. Now, the Kundalini doesn't have any problem flowing anywhere in your body that it wants, but there are issues that are both karmic and both current within a human expression that needs to be refined in order for kundalini not to amplify the wrong things. You know, we don't amplify our ego with kundalini if we can help it. We don't amplify our competition. We don't amplify our violence. We don't amplify our negativity or our hurtful, uh, you know, thoughts or, or, or comments or, or, you know, activity. We only amplify with kundalini the most positive, the most sacred, the most loving areas of the, human, of the human equation. And the deal is, I'm not saying, oh, ignore all your negativity. I'm, no, no, no. And, you know, that's not going to happen anyway. Okay? I'm going to say work with your negativity, turn that negativity into a positivity, and let's make this distinction when we're talking about darkness or negativity or things of that nature. When a seed is in the soil, it is dark. That darkness is not evil. That darkness is not 
lacking morals or ethics. That darkness is the darkness of the womb, and it is a pure, joyful, loving existence and and transformation that occurs inside that darkness. So let's not confuse uh, uh, negative ego expressions and fear with darkness, because it isn't. Darkness is a is beyond uh, like like light. Darkness is part of the divine equation here, part of that dual equation of 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 one thing and then it's polar opposite. You know, uh, that spectrum is what we're exploring here, and there are many 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 uh, little individual spectrums like what I just described within the human equation. And so these spectrums are going to get uh, lit up by the kundalini, and then one by one or group by group, you and your kundalini will begin to balance uh, the energies and the issues and the karma that are represented by these these uh, lit up areas. Okay, And this is what can begin to happen as you begin to go into the tongue up, the eyes up, the fingers in position, the chin to the chest, and the last one being uh, to squeeze your sphincter. Uh, this is they, uh, the yoga, Kundalini yoga people call it something else. I forget what, uh, but they do. They practice a lot of these bondages as well. Um, and for those of you that are asking, oh, uh, Kristen, do you recommend Kundalini yoga for the awakening of the Kundalini? And I say, no, I do not. I do not recommend that one yoga for that. I'll recommend any yoga for that. But I will recommend the safety protocols, what we're talking about now, first and foremost, uh, out of all of them, because this is written by the Kundalini for the Kundalini in you and in the people that I was that I was going to continuously meet in seminars, the general public. That would be you. Okay. The special sacred portion, and I have to say it's a very small portion or percentage of the general public who is ready to hear information about kundalini. Okay. To even hear the word, to know the word. Okay, so so eyes up, tongue up, fingers in position, chin to your chest, sphincters uh, tightened, and then just breathe normally through your nose, and then tighten all your muscles, and then relax, and then tighten and relax, and then tighten, and relax, and then try as best you can to add these uh, these locks into your meditation position, both when you're lying in bed at night and then if you're sitting in a chair like I used to meditate quite a bit, sitting uh, upright in a chair with, with my rear end scooted to the edge of the chair so that my spine did not necessarily need to conform to the curvature of the chair I was sitting in, but rather to the curvature that the kundalini was was uh, was implicating within my spine so that it could go natural. You'll find that, that you might have, you know, if you're not used to meditating these ways, you might get a little sore at first. Believe me, it goes away quickly. Uh, moving out of the of the uh, of the uh, the locks or the uh, the positions, let's go straight into uh, water. Uh, as the Kundalini rises, it will stimulate and activate the kidneys and the adrenal glands. The adrenals and the kidneys can become really hot, and it really does. It is that way. It feels hot. Oh my God, you're sweating. You're sweating in an ice storm. Uh, I don't know if you, I used to live in Yosemite. That's a, that's kind of burning right now, as a matter of fact. But don't worry about Yosemite. They get fires there all the time. It is a natural part of that deal. Um, that Sierra scenario. Uh, water. You need to stay hydrated because you'll feel so hot, uh, you'll feel thirsty all the time, and I want you to hydrate yourself with stuff like coconut milk or coconut water, watermelon, uh, just straight water. But I, your electrolytes are being eaten up or ravaged at an extreme rate with the kundalini, so I need you to keep your, your electrolytic balance happening. And so uh, you'll notice that some of the sports uh, teams and sports figures over the years have you, you see them pouring Gatorade over their head at the end of games and whatnot. Well, Gatorade is an electrolytic dispenser. It it gives you uh, fluidic 
electrolytes. And if you can't get anything else, then I would suggest, you know, I have a glass of Gatorade every day. I don't like all the dyes in it. I don't like the artificial sugar. I don't like I don't like the wood rosins and all the different stupid, silly stuff that they put into it. But I also appreciate what it does for the Kundalini Awakened person. Now, if you, you can get the same thing better, by far better, in coconut milk or watermelon. So go for it. Now, there's another drink out there called vitamin water, which is another electrolytic dispenser, and it's probably better than Gatorade. So you can get these. You know I travel a lot, right? So I, I also drive travel. I don't. It's not always flying in a plane. Uh, I drive a lot. I like to drive. It's one of my things. I get a lot of meditation done when I'm driving. Not eyes closed meditation, but, uh, but uh, with uh, you, you know, as, as I travel over the country, I stop at these gas stations or petrol stations or fuel stations, however people like to say that. And I notice you can get the vitamin water, you can get the the uh, Gatorade off the shelf in the United States. Uh, at these at these dispensaries, these locations, uh, I didn't see much of that in, in Britain. Although I'm sure uh, in the UK they have uh, electrolytic uh, fluids that can help. Probably really expensive. I noticed everything is really expensive in Britain. Everything. Um, I didn't notice too much of that in Ireland. Uh, maybe Amelia can write in and she can she can give me a heads up on some of the the offerings that a person can have. I don't know how. How uh, you know the, the 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 food is dispensed in the in the in the European Union now? Uh, I just know that they have an organized thing with it. And if you look for electrolytes uh, in the country that you're in, you should be able to find something that will help you. And the reason why you want these electrolytes is because they help the dissemination of the Kundalini in your body, and they can help defray the heat. They can help turn that heat down a little bit. It can be quite surprising and quite irritating at times, and sometimes you'll get a heat rash from it, which will last two or three days, and and then uh, then it'll go away on its own. Don't worry about it. Your body, because of the uh, of the electrolytes being evaporated and the water being evaporated and the and the uh, the amount of of uh, of change that the kundalini is is, is giving into the body. Uh, you know, it's very, very, very important to keep yourself hydrated. Uh, there's levels of change there that are going on that are hot and heavy. And now, these adrenal glands that are sitting on top of your kidney gland, kidneys, they give out a substance called uh, uh, adrenaline. And the adrenaline is the fight or flee hormone that the, our, our first chakra survival and second chakra gave us so that when we're being chased by wolves or a cave lion or a cave bear, well, we could get away, hopefully. And uh, and and uh, that that adrenaline is kind of like a, a <laughs> that's like rocket fuel for the human, right? Well, this is what Kundalini begins to release in the human body copiously, is that adrenaline. And if you don't have anything to fight or flee, then your ego mind will create people or animals or things or things to fight or flee. In other words, to to be in fear of. And uh, so I really want you to look at the water and stay hydrated. I like Crystal Geyser. I like Fiji water. I don't like the one that has all the fluoride in it. I think that's called Trinity. Um, I like... Uh, yeah, I like natural water sources, of course, uh, if I can find them. But, uh, you know, be, be very particular. Let let you and your kundalini choose what I uh, or what water water source you're going to, to really enjoy and, and then stick with that. Which moves us straight down to programming. And programming means TV, movies, books, music, friends, family, church, Internet, um, water cooler talk, uh, you know, all of that type of thing. And, you know, in, in our culture, we are seeing and reading and hearing uh, from various sources many negative and fear-evoking forms of entertainment, news, communications, and global developments. This is not so helpful 
when a person is really activated with the Kundalini. Fear, uh, excessive lust, hateful attitudes can be quite painful and damaging to the new uh, Kundalini energies, and many unfortunate events can be created by the, 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 the Kundalini exposed to such energies. So no scary movies. By this I mean horror flicks. Now, some of these zombie movies coming out, I will say no. Don't go there with that. But some of you are just going to go anyway, and, and I want you to make the real distinction that uh, a lot of these zombie movies have a level of comedic uh, relief within them, so utilize those as much as you can. Um, I would say generally stay away from horror movies or movies that cause you to be afraid of a thing or a person, especially those movies that don't have a positive resolution. Okay, so if you if the movie doesn't have a positive resolution, then I don't want you to listen to it because would you show that movie to a two-year-old? And if you haven't had the Kundalini yet, are you not as innocent uh, in, into the dual the dual universe as a two-year-old is innocent to the to the universe that it's blown that it's born into? Well, yes, you are. You are that innocent, and I just as soon not have you become the lead player in a in a horror movie that's being played over and over and over through your mind because your ego, uh, you know, is attached to the fear that it provides. So try not to see those types of TV shows or movies or read those types of books. Music that is hurtful to other people or basically suggesting a uh, a... a hateful attitude or a hurtful attitude towards towards yourself or men or women or kids or the environment, uh, once again, I, you know, I will suggest, no, you don't need this. You do not need this. You have moved beyond this music. And then and then we listen to our friends. You know, our friends, you know, they they form our our opinions in many ways and subjects that we don't understand that they might understand, but we listen to them. Well, as a friend, I'm going to say, don't accept the parameters that people who do not have kundalini, people who do not have kundalini, advise you to do. They may mean well, they may have read a few books, they may have gone to a few websites, but they don't have it themselves and they do not know. And they certainly do not know how to help you. You need to go to somebody who has had it or is having it and is continuing to have it. Okay? So watch this programming. Watch what your family says. Oh, my gosh, honey. You know, um, why is why is our little child, Christian, there on the floor moving in all those spastic ways? Is he having a seizure? Well, I don't know, honey. He seems to be having a good idea good time. He's got a smile on his face. He's not saying too much. Uh, do you want to call an ambulance? Okay. This is a fairly common experience that people will have when they're going through their Kundalini equation. Your family will not understand and it will scare them and for their love for you and their love for you and their wish to help you and to assist you, they will call 911 and they will come over with a padded ambulance and a nice, beautiful, crisp, white straight jacket to put you in, and a very nice, bleachy-smelling uh, padded room for you to to rest in as you, you know, as they as they evaluate what kind of really strong tranquilizers they're going to pump into your veins. And so you really need to, if your if your family can't have this, they can't understand this, then anything they tell you about this is not going to help you with Kundalini. And it may just possibly hurt you. So you don't listen to them and you don't tell them about it because they don't understand. And what they don't understand, they're going to have fear of. And then they will try to help you because of their fear. And so, you know, they're wonderful, loving people. Don't get me wrong. And, and they're not going out of their way to try to hurt you unless, of course, they are. Uh, so, so really, really, really don't share this with, with people in your family who you are sure will not understand. And this goes with your church. Kundalini can feel like it's a, it's a separate entity inside your spine. 
moving your tailbone side to side, up and down, moving your spine, moving your hips, moving your legs, your arms, your neck, your eyes, making you uh, have a voice, you know, like an animal. I mean, it's all different kinds of things that the Kundalini uh, brings a person to and through. And, you know, if you go to your church and say, oh, Reverend, most high Reverend, very right, whatever, uh, we'll call him Jones. Reverend Jones, yeah, you know, I've been feeling like I have a, like a, you know, I, I feel like I have, my, like in my back there's this, this movement and it feels like there's a serpent in my back and, and, and Reverend Jones' eyes will get so wide and they'll go, oh my God, you Satan is what I do. You must be healed of this possession. I hope that wasn't too loud for all of you there. I apologize. And this is just kind of a uh, an entertaining, stereotypical response of a of a of a of a of a person who does not accept anything except what their own dogma tells them, and that is the church dogma. And now there are some churches that will uh, that accept the Kundalini. It's just not a lot of uh, churches in the United States, well, or Western Europe for that matter. There are more. There are more ex, uh, accepting uh, establishments in other countries, but in the United States, you know, say in the Christian community, uh, Kundalini is not looked upon favorably at all. And I will suggest that you do not bring it up to them. I will suggest you do not bring it up with them. You know, when I advertise for for uh, for a Kundalini seminar, awakening seminar. I have to really research an area, you know. What, you know, like here in Santa Rosa, you know, where there's a church almost on every corner, you know, and you have people that are, that are, uh, you know, marching around. If they don't agree with you, they will get a sign. They will paint terrible things about you, say say terrible things about you, and then they will march around where you're going to put on that event and. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of people that are not real happy with how their interpretation of Kundalini uh, works with, say, biblical teachings and whatnot. And I will suggest to those of you that have the Kundalini or searching for the Kundalini that the King James Version, when you read it from a Kundalini uh, viewpoint, is an activation manual for Kundalini. It's just written in a very, very uh, distinct way, and it it you have to release fixations on on expected terminologies and their and their meanings uh that were basically interpreted and reinterpreted and interpreted and reinterpreted over the millennia that the King James Version was put together by King James himself. Okay, he was also using interpretations in order to write his version of of the uh, the Christian Bible. So really watch these programmings. Watch watch what television programs you to do is it is it you know depending upon your programming and what you're watching on tv uh are you moving into areas that are just really all about lust oh let's look at that guy swimming on the beach oh let's look at that girl parading herself along the beach oh let's let's look at every movement of the flesh beneath their fabric and all of this type of thing right uh oh let's look at that eye makeup commercial or the deodorant commercial or the tooth whitening commercial or, the, you know, all these types of things. And, and look at that programming if you have to, and then consciously dismiss it. You don't need to remember. Uh, well, here, let me give you an example. When I was when I was a young child, uh, my mother was a single mother. She had four kids, and so she was always working in the daytime. And we had babysitters in the, in the, in the, in the daytime. And, uh, and of course, what the babysitters would do with us is just plop us down in front of the black and white TV and turn that on and then do whatever they wanted to do. And so I got a lot of TV when I was a kid. And uh, I can still remember programming from my childhood that I saw during those babysitting sessions. Like a phone number. I have this one phone number. It's from uh, a Bennett Ford. So it goes, it goes, a Bennett Ford is a better Ford. A Bennett Ford is a better Ford. Call 
call 555-5555. That's 555 That's 555-5555. And I'll just say that to you to illustrate the level of memory that the human being can take in. And is do you need to know about Bob Bennett's board phone number 50 years later in your life? Really? <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to suggest that you, you don't. <laughs> you don't do that. And that you, you know, you, you take that commercialism and, and that type of thing out of your programming as best that you can. And this goes along with books and along with magazines. And Now let's look at the news. For me, I always look at the news behind the news. Okay, you know, right now, you know, they're they're looking at uh, intervening into Syria because of chemical attacks and things of this nature. And I'm looking at a different picture. And well, who's really behind this? Well, how did Syria get chemical weapons? And oh, you know, maybe they bought them from the United States. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on that the the news is trying to point your concentration in a certain area. And I'm going to suggest that you expand it into all areas and follow the money. Follow the, the, follow the money, follow the, the clues that give you information about what is really going on and why. Uh, you know, what, what nation is doing this and why, how is it being motivated to do what it's doing and why, uh, that type of a thing. And so you can, you can still watch the news, but you need to expand your level of uh, understanding into the idea that the news that you're hearing isn't necessarily the news that's going on. The news that you're hearing is an editor's opinion of what he thinks you want to hear based upon what is going on and based upon what his network producers and the, the network owners want to put out there. And that goes the same with the newspaper and the editors. It goes the same with the, you know, web content. You have to look through it all. Okay. So, uh, so do your best uh, uh, to to bring love and peace and forgiveness into your daily and nightly life, and in your discernment of your society and what is happening around you. Uh, and I know this sounds difficult, but it's not. Just make it a priority. Start small and then increase it. Put yourself on a schedule. Give yourself two weeks for one little area to get really good at and then expand that area and give yourself two weeks with the expanded area. Okay, and so on and so forth. Really do it. Uh, This is setting the best pattern for the Kundalini to follow in its transformation of your life. And it is about transforming your life. Uh, moving on down to safety, we look at the food choices, and I've discussed some of this already uh, in, in different conversations. I want you, once again, to pay attention to the new tastes and desires your body begins to have. If, you have, if you've been a vegetarian and you start having an interest in beef, well, don't resist this. Don't resist this. This is not you that's giving you that desire for beef. This is the Kundalini changing your appetite standards. And I want you to take out the attachment of moral fixation upon whether it's better to be a vegetarian or a carnivore or an omnivore. I can tell you straight up that kundalini will turn you into an omnivore. There will be some meat that it will require that you partake of because that's part of your kundalini awakening equation. Uh, These dogmas that have been spread uh, through the Buddhist and the Hindu communities and other communities uh, about, oh, vegetarian is the way to go. Oh, don't kill Bambi. You know, nobody's out there killing Bambi except Godzilla. And I will point you to the reference of Godzilla versus Bambi. It's a classic, and I suggest it to everyone. (coughs) I saw it in 1978. Tells you how old it is. Um, yeah, so I, I really, I really, oh, I, let me put the numbers out here again. If you have a question about your Kundalini Awakening uh, experience, please call 347 934 0026. If you're in the United States, you'll probably want to put a 1 in front of that 347. 
So one three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and we'll have a chat about your Kundalini awakening experience. Uh, the food choices, once again, are very important. Don't resist it. I know, I know the programming that that maybe uh, your religious uh, uh, affiliation might guide you towards, or your own inner guidance saying, "Oh." That meat is terrible, terrible, terrible. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here your kundalini is going to eat that meat. It's very good. It has it has a uh, qualities of proteins, enzymes uh, that you need in, in your development at this time. Eat it, or I will make you throw up until you do eat it. And I'm not kidding about that, by the way. Kundalini can make you bar for a long, long, long time. Uh, it can... It can if you resist it, it can turn around pretty quick and begin to correct its kundalini child. Think of a two-year-old wanting to put their hand on a hot stove and what that two-year-old's mother would do. Okay? It's the same thing with the kundalini. She's your mom. She knows that you're a kundalini child, and some of you are still embryonic in that stage, and some of you are quite along. And so based upon where you are within your process will determine how the the, uh, the divine feminine uh, mothers you and nurtures you in your education towards the greater enlightenment. And one of those educations is to res- don't resist kundalini food choices. Eat them and be grateful that they are there for you to eat and that you've received guidance to eat that. Okay? So really, really, really do this. And if you... And if, and if you're a carnivore and, and, you know, all you eat is meat and all of a sudden all you're being given is veggies, you know, your 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 uh, grocery cart's always being steered towards the fresh fruit, fresh vegetable aisle, take the clue. Get the organic food. And that for both for both areas, I, I want you to eat the cleanest food possible. And that means not chemical beef or chemical bird or chemical plant. I don't want you eating anything that is not organic or absolutely beyond organic, like like grown to the Oregon Tilt Standards or the California Food Act of 1990. Forget about USDA. The only thing USDA did to the organic market was to water down the cleanliness rules. That's all they did so that commercial farmers wouldn't have to clean up their act and, and, and uh, restore their land to to a a a a, uh, a natural diverse non fertilized or non chemically uh, uh, saturated condition. So the USDA or you know, USDA, oh please. Um, but California Food Act 1990 or Oregon Tilt Standards. That's T I L T H. If you can find it, as I travel across the United States. I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, avenue for people to buy organic, uh, like Publix Market, Safeway. You know, they'll have this little organic section, but it looks like, you know, a bunch of camels have stomped on it, peed, defecated on it, and then moved on. And they're putting a little sale, organic, organic veggies. (laughs) They try to make it look so bad that anybody in their right mind would look at that and go, oh, gosh, I think I'll go over to the chemical veggies and the chemical fruits and all the pesticides and herbicides that that, that, that uh, brings into your system. So watch for that grocery store programming. Realize that they will do those things because they've got contracts with those farmers, and those contracts need to be honored. And, you know, if people aren't buying what the uh, grocery store is contracted to that farmer to, to sell, well then, everybody's going to lose money. We can't have that. And those damn, those damn organic hippies, granolas, crunchies, whatever, uh, you know, they're not going to come in here and displace my chemical operation here, Monsanto generated or you know, inorganic, uh, genetically modified, you know, whatever. So uh, I'm going to say, really, really clean up your food. Clean up your water, clean up your food. Force yourself. Force yourself. Because it, your ego is going to resist it. Uh, which moves us into forgiveness. I'm not saying that you should hate chemical farmers. They're only doing what they've been allowed to do, what they've, you know, what they've kind of been raised expecting to do. 
And so it's not them, really. It's it's the governing governing bodies that are allowing certain things to happen that really shouldn't happen for the benefit of the of the inner ecosystem and the outer ecosystem. And the Kundalini would be the inner ecosystem uh, in, in the way I'm placing it here. Uh, I would like to say hello once again to everybody who's listening on the Flash chat. Uh, Eileen, Tim, and Fasti, and Brandon, and and, uh, and I believe that one there is, is uh, Amelia Centara. So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us in this conversation. Uh, moving onward uh, through the safeties. <clears throat> Uh, really clean up your food, okay, number one. So let's move into forgiveness. Forgiveness is huge. Forgiveness is something that has to be practiced all the time. And what I'm hearing is like, well, Chris, um, you know, I uh, I forgave everybody in my life last night. And I don't feel very different right now. I still, my, you know, my arms are moving on their own, and I'm seeing visions of, of snakes and giant spiders and sparkly lights and, I think I saw Buddha on the ceiling. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's working for me, guy. I, I don't think this forgiveness stuff's really. You have to forgive all the time, <laughs> over and over and over and over and over and over. Get the list, memorize it, familiarize yourself with it, and do that forgiveness all the time. And don't expect, and don't really have that that McDonald's instant gratification mindset with the kundalini. The kundalini has its own time agenda with you. It's not gonna it's not gonna to to, you know, sit with your time schedule unless and in some way it it augments Kundalini's own agenda with you. Okay, so really, really, really begin to put that and I'll just say right now, put together fifteen people that you need to forgive, and it, make sure yourself is one of those people. <laughs> we're the we're the we're the best culprit. So put yourself on that list, and then daily or nightly or both, go through that list and forgive them, forgive them, and forgive yourself with whatever interaction with them that you had that caused whatever happened to happen. Really, 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 really do this. This begins to loosen the bonds of of uh, emotional and and uh, uh, attitudinal restriction upon a person. Okay. Uh, whether, you know, this covers all the issues of grief and guilt and loss and abandonment and fear. And uh, these can and do manifest within the context of the Kundalini is pain. Okay. And and these these issues of of revenge and, and grudges, you know these these become attachments for in, energies and entities that feed off of those conditions. So let me give you an example. Uh, you you have a grudge against a person person's uh, uh, oh gosh I do. I have to tread carefully here. I can't use a stereotype. Uh, we'll go person. We'll go. This guy named Chris. He's a good target. So this guy named Chris. He comes up to you and he's a real rude uh, person. And uh, you know he's he says something really mean to you just for no reason, just maybe to see your reaction. Well, then you have to forgive him in the context that I'm talking about right now. You forgive him and you don't. Let anything that he says upset you. You realize that this person is going through his refinement. He, too, is a child of God, and and he is going through his refinement at this time. And nothing that he says should you hold against him any more than you would hold those very same words from the mouth of a two-year-old. You forgive it, let it go. Don't let it have a control on you. When you let it go, it can't control you. When you forgive it, it cannot control you. Okay? So forgive it. And I don't care uh, uh, how many years it's been or or in how many, uh, you know, uh, even the past lives. 
you know, this per- a person will have been racked with pain and anguish, and there is and has been always a, a, a way towards resolution, and this is forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the most important tools that you can have in your Kundalini Awakening tool chest, and, I, and it should be one of the most used tools in that tool chest. Hey, there's Rosemary. Rosemary has joined us. Um, let me bring her on here. So, Rosemary. Hi there, Master Chris. Hi. Hi. I how would are like. You? I'm good. I would like to join your excitement about forgiveness, and oh, to share please something please. about that. Please share. At first, I didn't realize writing it down was the the path and part of it but once i got that and i would write and write and over and over and over again and sometimes i didn't know what my part was and i remember also you saying about having expectations and if we have the expectations we're expecting something and that was what was generating my need to be forgiving of others because I have these expectations. So when I couldn't think of what my part was in it, I would just say, please forgive me for my expectations. And when I excellent, had learned... Excellent choice. Yeah. And when I had learned, this is not might be what you direct us to, but when I'd be driving, but carefully or even the middle of my meditation, I didn't have what I needed there to write or where I wanted it, I have taken to writing in the air. And I will say, Jana, I forgive you for your email. And my writing it in the air with my finger creates the same impact. And sometimes when I'm driving... Well, Sometimes I'll don't do that. Don't do that while well, you're driving. Keep your hands well, on the wheel. Okay. <laughs> don't do, pull pull the car over. <laughs> well, when when I have the opportunity, even just writing it on something beside me, or it, when I no, have I that. No, I think that's a great. That's that's a very 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 excellent technique, uh, Rosemary. Thank you. Thank you for mm-hmm. sharing that. I think that it, it's 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 crucial to be able to bring it into your into your daily awareness, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and when you have things in your daily awareness, well, that is when you have the best opportunity to make your behavioral modification real. You know, sitting there at the dinner table, going, "Okay, I forgive Chris M for, uh, you know, um, not." taking his shoes off before he came into the house. I forgive him. I forgive him. I forgive him. And then, as you come to your house and you take your shoes off in the middle of the day before you come into the house, and you remember that I forgive Chris for not taking his shoes off in the house, well, you can forgive him once again. Mm-hmm. You, you can kind of tie your forgiveness to the activity of what it is you're forgiving in another person. Mm. Mhm. You know what I'm saying? Mhm. I'd not thought of that before. Observed that at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the thousands of millions of people that are listening right now? No, but it's nice to know that everyone's there. Yep. I couldn't agree more. And thank you, my dear. Yes. I will put thank you, you back sir. on for your listening mode, and thank you for your for your excellent suggestion. Here we go. Okay, yeah, so so what she said is absolutely correct. Uh, look, re- you want to resolve these difficulties. And after many years or a lifetime of experience, it's often difficult and seemingly impossible to find resolution. And, and so the first thing I must suggest is you need to develop the intent to have that resolution occur. And then to follow that intention with action, and in this case, uh, as Rosemary was saying, even you could just use your finger as a as an air pen and write it in the air. Chris, I might forgive you for being such an idiot. Okay, so so and that 
that goes for anybody, you know, even beyond Chrism. <laughs> so, yeah, just use your forgiveness tool as much as you possibly can. And then here's another recapitulation uh, or, or another forgiveness tool. Here's the deal. It's just like when you realize that we're all here on this physical plane to learn and come to direct contact with others who have qualities that are different from our own, forgiveness gives us a platform for tolerance, which is another divine aspect of love. In the context of the Kundalini energies, this is a very important practice that must be done daily and with the most sincere and heartfelt expression. It lays the foundation for most, if not all, of the special gifts and skills that come with an awakening. Recapitulate all peoples who have done harm to you. Recapitulate means basically you write their name down on a piece of paper. Write their name, what they did to you, and that you forgive them. Okay. Think back upon your life for experiences, and for the moment, pick out the highlights of hurts that have been inflicted upon you or and by you. Now, consciously forgive them and yourself. And there may still be karmic repercussions, but this will go a long way towards ameliorating them. So practice this recapitulation daily. And new remembrances will come to mind uh, and getting in line for the forgiveness. This requires an honest acknowledgement of activity from both the, re the receiving and of the inflicting aspects of our experiences with others. So honesty towards oneself is another ingredient that must be attained in order for this to work. Um, regardless of where the blame is, regardless of where the blame is, forgiveness must be reached for and given. And it's not a small task, but it is an essential task. And as the forgiveness encounters the heavy vibrational construct of the emotional blockage, uh, and that's what it is, you know, an emotional blockage is this, this heavy vibrational matrix of guilt and fear and pain and anger and revenge and grudges, you know, and hurt, you know, and, and it just kind of sits there in, in the way of the Kundalini. And, and as the... Uh, as the forgiveness encounters that heavy vibrational construct, divine love, which is represented by forgiveness, will seep uh, uh, into the matrix, causing, in many cases, an emotional outburst of release and a relief of the burden that's, that's been occurring. And the blockage is relieved and the kundalini continues its invigoration throughout the body. So for optimal results, this must be done daily and constantly throughout your conscious periods. For example, someone cuts you off on the freeway, forgive them as quickly as you can. You know how fast you condemn them. <laughs> but that, well, try to forgive them as fast or as quickly as you condemn them. Do this immediately, and it will begin to smooth your condemnations to the point where you'll be happy to let them in and, and wish them well upon their way. There is far more positivity in this world if we only choose to, to express it. As I was saying earlier at the beginning of the show about the whole darkness thing, the seed is not evil. The darkness that envelops the seed is not evil. The only thing that's evil is the person's ego. And the only thing that that, that can really do the evil, malevolent things that, a, that, that the prisons are full of people doing is the ego. And if you, if you allow the ego to run rampant through your kundalini uh, experience, you just may end up in that prison too. The ego attracts entities that feed off the fruits of ego. Fear, uh, uh, um, Competitiveness, uh, lack of self worth, over self worth. I mean, you know, all the all the the real negatives of and of uh, the hurtful human condition. That's where the evil is. The evil is in the hearts of humanity. It isn't in the dirt or the soil. So it isn't in every dark place. Okay, the coloration of a thing does not denote its ethical value. 
the coloration of a certain person, animal, thing does not denote the ethical uh, aspects of that person or creation. Lack of light does not indicate evil. Abundance of light, light does not indicate love. You have to choose love. You have to choose how you wish to express. That's part of the human evolution process. You choose. You get to choose how you want to be. And you also get to choose uh, to to uh, receive the fruits of your choices. So if you want to be a murderer, well, then you're going to receive the fruits of that choice. If you want to be a millionaire, then you're going to receive the, the fruits of that choice and the decisions that you make in order to to become those things, okay? Positivity is the choice that I'm going to suggest you make. Positive, love-based, forgiving, tolerance, honest, truthful, uh, loving, happy, joyful. These are the areas that I want you to pursue. Believe me, you can have as much endorphin excitation from these areas as you can from going to a horror flick. Even more so. Okay. Uh, watching people do bad things to other people is another one of those uh, programming uh, uh, scenarios that I'll suggest that you resist. Okay. And, you know, this being said, you know, and I go to the movies, and I, I just, I've been in the movies. I know what it's like to be on a movie set. I know what they're doing. And so when I see the movie, I, I kind of don't... I, part of me separates and goes, oh, okay, that's a Warner Brothers haircut there. That guy, he stepped on his T-focus line. Uh, that camera's doing a slow pull back. They obviously edited in, you know, a special effect here and there. And so, you know, when I look at it, those are the things that I enjoy doing. And so I don't really get caught up and the negativity that is being advertised through the specific activity in the movie. Okay. So the scenario is, is I don't want you to even watch the movie if you can't look beyond what the movie is telling you. Um, yeah, and, and a lot of the movies will have a mixed, you know, they'll have a mixed signal that they're giving out, and that's okay. Just take the positives. Take the positives and release the negativity, and I will suggest that you stop referring to evilness as darkness, because it isn't. It isn't. It's the ego that becomes rotted. And in that, and in that rotten expression is where evil is allowed to, to, uh, to, to flourish. Which moves us right into inner joy. <laughs> so, when you experience a situation in which you find yourself in very unfamiliar territory, uh, the first impulse is to go into fear. And I want you to begin to cultivate a memory of when you have been joyous. I don't care what it was. Well, I do care what it was. It needs to be something that was positive, joyful, positivity, uh, your your child, your first child is born, or your 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 your, your spouse to be agreed to marry you, or whatever brought you some really wonderful, beautiful, joyful experiences. I want you to remember that. I want you to remember winning winning a jackpot at the casino. I want you to remember uh, uh, buying your spouse a, a new car and the beautiful expression of of uh, surprise and joy on their face. I want you to remember your most positive Christmas uh, uh, experience or, or Ramadan experience or, or any kind of an experience that, that allows you to celebrate uh, your life and, and uh, you know, what's happening to you in your life. I really want you to, to begin to open to the joy that is there within you. I really want you to do that. I want to. I'm going to strongly suggest that because this is the pathway to bliss. Bliss will occur anyway, but when you back it up with this kind of support and lack of a resistance, it becomes very strong and very beautiful, very powerful. 
I'll have you know that I'm only touching on these because I'm running out of time. Um, inner joy is what you think of when you begin to fear about anything. You know, you think of that joy because fear, unless you're running from that grizzly or whatever, then fear is just not going to help you very much. As a matter of fact, it may hurt you so much that you may become the uh, the recipient of whatever fear-evoking situation is, is plaguing you at the time. So really begin to remember your joy and internalize it. Place, there's there's plenty of, of mansions in your heart right now that are that were built by joyful encounters and joyful experiences. And I want you to really I want you to really uh um, focus on that. Uh, can everybody still hear me, Eileen? Or or Brandon or Fashti, is it still coming through okay? I'm afraid I may have had my finger over the microphone thing there. So if you can write me, let me know again. And I appreciate your feedback with that. This moves us into uh, levels of trust. Trust the process that is happening to you. Know and understand that God is watching everything. Spirit is watching everything. You are safe in the arms of the divinity as long as you practice the love and forgiveness that are part of what we teach. If you stray into areas of negativity, willfully and with malice aforethought, well then, that is what something you may receive. You know, if this is a, let's see, yes, sounds good. Thank you, Eileen, thank you. Trust is huge. Um, it is in your best interest uh, as part of the Kundalini agenda uh, to have the Kundalini or you would not have been a- allowed to activate or even to know about this. So so really, trust your Kundalini. I'm not saying trust Chrism. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I'm not saying trust Chrism. I'm not saying trust KAS. I'm not saying trust Amelia or Eileen or Pashti or Brandon or anybody or Tim. Tim Ashworth. I'm not saying trust them. I'm saying you trust your kundalini. But make sure it is your kundalini. Okay? And then let's move into honesty. As you feel the energy work its way within you, be honest about yourself, with yourself, about what is happening. Watch out for denial. You know, we always want to be innocent. Oh, I didn't do that. Or it wasn't my fault. Okay? Watch out for denial. If you start falling into denial, you can miss information that Kundalini is trying to impart to you. So be aware of how you are honestly feeling. Watch yourself closely and without becoming too obsessed over it. Uh, When you feel sensations of a presence or an object traveling inside your spine, do not chalk it up to, you know, a sore back or that last tennis match or the you know, the tight clothing or the yoga class or, you know, whatever. Unless, of course, it is from that. Uh, But be clear and honest and see if it fits the descriptions of what you have learned here about uh, what Kundalini does and what it is and how it it, uh, it affects the body. Which brings us into love and to actively love what is happening. Express this love by being actively forgiving and interested in being of service to others. Not in a slavish way or a demeaning way, but in a confident and strength-based loving way. Help that kid or senior citizen or fellow mortal without endangering yourself, preferably. This allows the Kundalini to activate your systems much cleaner, more quickly. I know this doesn't sound like it should be, because it doesn't sound as linear as we like it. But actions of love beget actions of love. And Kundalini loves love. It will follow love. It will follow love before it will follow hate in a big way. Which is really, I mean, if you start looking at that as a as an evolutionary uh, uh, signal to you, follow love. Don't try to fight fire with fire. Don't 
summon demons so that you can force them to do good things because their karma is to be punished by doing good things because they represent bad things. Like a Brummel and the maids, he would do that. And there's some some folks these days that are, you know they they feel that they're very very powerful people and that they want to just uh, use the magic of uh, the golden or what is the Aleister Crowley's group? I forget what they call that. Uh, uh, the Golden Dawn, I think. Don't go into magic with this. You don't need magic. Divinity is far beyond magic. Magic is for the ego. Magic is for trying to control others. Even if you're nice, you know, you're still controlling them. You know, in many in many times against their wishes. And yes, I know magic is a tool and it's, you know, all of these things can be just put in a toolkit, but until you've got your ego in control, stay away from anything that can uh, poison the pool, shall we say. Get your ego in control first before you start using magic. And don't think that magic has all the answers. Magic is just a screwdriver. And a screwdriver is not going to help you when you need a hacksaw. Okay? Just to put it, you know, a tool man perspective. Uh, as you feel the energy working its way within you, be honest with yourself about what is happening. Watch out for your denial. Okay. When you feel sensations or a presence of an object moving inside your spine, don't chalk it up to a sore back or any of that. Uh, be clear and honest and see if it fits the descriptions of what you've learned here. Okay. And then begin to actively love what is happening. Express this act of love by being actively forgiving and tolerant and interested in being of service to others. Not in, as I said, not as in a slavish way but in a confident and strength-based loving way. You change that frequency. Okay, you turn it around. You, 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 helping others is a sign of strength. It's not a sign of weakness. Um, love causes the energy to move rapidly, and as you practice this quality, you will find the negativity just doesn't seem to come your way as much. And then almost never, and this is what I was referring to, um, service to others or for others is an essential practice. It is an essential practice for the kundalini of this lineage. This this lineage is, is what I'm teaching. Others who have activated without these teachings have and are suffering terribly, and my heart goes out to them, but they will learn, in their good or their bad time, they will learn that what you are learning right now, that this is one of the best safeties you can practice, because as I mentioned before, you are being observed, really. And those who are observing will not allow you, who are not, who are now part of, of their lineage to be harmed for the practice of love. Karma is a different story. You know, if you have to be harmed to balance a karma, well, then that will occur as well. Um, just a moment. There we are. Okay, so practice love. Actively practice love. Okay. Um as you practice, communications and assurances from your kundalini will be given by the kundalini to help you on your path, even if it's given to you from a person like me. You have to remember, for those of you that have the kundalini, Fajji, Eileen, Amelia, uh, uh, Ro Rosemary, I mean, these people that I know for a fact have the kundalini. Uh, Tim, I'm going to include you in that. Uh, it's there with you all the time. It doesn't come and go. The symptoms may come and go, but the kundalini itself is always there. It's always there. Okay? It is omnipresent. And you need to understand that. You need to understand that it is, it is omnipresent. And everything you do is influenced by it, including listening to this radio show. You know, what pulled you to listen to uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems? I mean, what pulled you to hear this blog talk, two-hour radio thing? I mean, didn't you have better things you could have done with your time? You know, maybe some soap operas on TV or maybe a good cartoon. <laughs> maybe some Colgate commercials. 
So the scenario is you already are within a level of guidance by your own intuitive uh, consciousness, and many of the intuitive consciousness sources are from the Kundalini, especially those of you who know the word, know what it is. That information has an effect on you. It has a physiological effect upon your body, just knowing the word Kundalini. Just that much begins an activation sequence. So know that and understand that. Be grateful for the ideas and thoughts and wisdoms that begin to flow into your mind, sometimes like a flood. Gratitude. Be grateful for the Kundalini as it is bringing you to a new and greater understanding of the all that is. Be grateful to your family and friends and perfect strangers for what they bring to your life and the opportunities that come your way. Say to yourself, in your mind, at heart, that you are grateful for these gifts and even greater ones will come your way. This is the nature of the path you are walking. Diligence and integrity are richly rewarded which moves us to prayer. Devotion, which is a which is prayer is an action of devotion. Um, devotion is one of the strongest uh, agreements and love affairs that one can have uh, with the divinity that we know of as Kundalini. Devotion is very, very powerful and very, very strong, and it leads people into beautiful areas of interaction with the kundalini and so i will say yes pray to the kundalini and this can be one of the more difficult safeties to practice especially if you were not raised in an, in an environment respectful of embracing prayer like myself we didn't we didn't practice religiosity at all we uh my mother sent me to church so that i could use, uh, i could learn some manners about how to be in church during the holidays so I had to sit in that pew and watch the people come up and do their thing and sing and stand and sit, sing, stand, sit, all the different things that they have you do in church. And uh, so I just kind of waited for it to end. But now with Kundalini and I know what praying is like and I know that divinity is real and I know that God is real and I and I have this expression within me and it's always there, Um I want you to communicate with that expression within you. And prayer is a perfect way to communicate with the kundalini. So you just say, my God, kundalini. Repeat that after me. My God, kundalini. And then kundalini, because it's represented in every uh, religion, you know, kundalini knows that you know. And it knows what you know. And uh, it will know that... uh, that you're coming into this from a devotional aspect, and it will honor that. You'll get, you know, you get a lot of response when you do the uh, devotions. Uh, let's see. I'll read to you what I wrote here. Uh, there are many misconceptions about uh, prayer, and I won't go into those here. I will only say that it is very important and must be practiced. Christ is real. Mary is real. Yahweh, Buddha, Allah, Zeus, Sabel, to name a few. All of them are real. And yes, I know that this is a real stretch for some of you. And it was for me too. But however we feel about this culturally, this is just how it is behind the veil. I'm not saying to pray to all of them. But if you don't already have one, pick one that you like. Or just pick God. And pray. Pray for healing. Pray for a friend or a stranger or a family member. Pray for yourself. Pray for the Kundalini to take you where it is you want to go or to become what it is you want to become. This can be very, very, very helpful. Do not disregard this because you're unaccustomed to it. Stretch yourself and make this a part of your practice. I'm going to open the phone lines. If anybody would like to call, put a 1 in front of 347 Nine three four zero zero two six. That's one three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. This takes us to movement. I would suggest you do dance, or you do tai chi, or yoga, or the five Tibetans, or any of the things that actually get you out there and move. It's very, very important that you move. Okay, these activities 
the ones that I just mentioned, dance, tai chi, five Tibetans, yoga, these nurture the kundalini in your body, filling the cells and stretching the muscle. So I'm going to suggest you actively practice hands-on healing. Heal that mouse. I used to heal black widows before they told me they didn't want me to heal them. Uh, that was when I was a kid. Play or walk, but do not sit and be a couch potato. This can lead to a stagnant energy response, and you don't want me, or you don't want that, trust me, because it's very painful. Stagnant energy can be, I'm not going to get into it, but it, it can hurt. Uh, so this moves us into, you know, we just finished our movement, uh, which is, you know, we'll say, as soon as you finish doing your, your movement, like, say, the five Tibetans, you, you get to... Um, you can add the compression uh, prayer alternate nostril breathing technique. If you get too hot, then you can do the single nostril breathing. If you get too hot, then plug your right nostril and inhale gently through your uh, left nostril, and that should cool you down. And then alternatively, if you're too cold, plug your left nostril, breathe in gently through your right nostril, and that should heat you up. Okay? Um, those are basically using the solar and the lunar channels to uh, to accentuate uh, body temperature. And it looks like... I think I'll be, oh, we do. We have versions of the safeties in uh, Spanish, Turkish, Korean, and uh, a French version of the safeties. And I'd like to thank Magali for the French version. I'd like to thank Bradley for the Korean version. I'd like to thank Ali for the Turkish version. And I would like to thank Emma for the Spanish version and any of the other versions that are going to be corrected or, or written by those international folks out there listening. I would like to thank you in advance. Um, I will do another show on the five Tibetans just so that we can, we can do that um, separately because there are certain combinations that I like to do with the five Tibetans that I won't have time to get into here. However... I will open up the phone lines once again. Put a one in front of 347-934-0026. And as we move into, uh, I'm going to skip the five Tibetans, but here's the practice. Every day or night or both, you do this practice. You start with the five Tibetans, and if you haven't done the five Tibetans before, you start slow with no more than six repetitions for each Tibetan. And then you're constantly in a practice of forgiveness and recapitulation, and forgiveness of self and others. And you're, you're in a constant state of gratitude for the good and the bad as the teachings are acquired with both. You're surrendering completely to the energy with love and joy and desire to be at one with the kundalini as it is revealed to you. Uh, you say your prayers to the shakti or you pray to the kundalini and then, of course, we have the compression prayer and alternate nostril breathing, which I will take up with you when we do the five Tibetans program. And then meditate. I want you to meditate. And I will take that up uh, in the next program as well. And so uh, the next show will be the safeties part two. And, uh, and I may add a few more things that I wanted to add that I haven't been able to add to this, like grounding. I want you to know how important grounding is to the safeties. Uh, yeah. So so anyway, uh, the uh, the phone lines are open one three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And it looks like I'm going to go ahead as I'm not receiving a call. I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. I would like to thank you all for for listening here live. Uh, all the guests and. Fasci and Eileen and Brandon and, and everybody. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for listening in the future on the archives. So nice to, to feel the readings being done in the future. And our next show will be uh, The Safeties Part 2. And uh, we'll go ahead and move into that next Wednesday, seven days from today. And I'd like to thank you all uh, for stopping by and giving a listen. And it looks like... Uh, Eileen, you're typing something. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness. And everyone, thank you for your kindness and listening. Bye-bye.